It's the metal rune stones. It's in front of you. Find them. The metal. The runes. You need that sword. Go to the shaft. Find the shards. Where is it? Find, Find it. it. There it is. Focus. King in the north forced the dwarves to make a sword that would never fail and never rust, and that would slice through iron and stone and bring victory to its bearer. But the angry dwarves cursed it. It would be the death of a man every time it was drawn, and it would be the death of the king. Let me tell you about the sword Tyrving. I don't recognize this place. Where are we? Where is she? It feels wrong. Where are we now? Burial mound. So strange that we go to such lengths to bury death. Something so very ordinary. Inevitable. It's as if we conspire to hide death because we have no answer for it. But when it comes and forces itself onto our friends or loved ones, then comes the reckoning. Senua, you remind me of a story that the Northmen tell about a young woman warrior. Her name is Herver, the daughter of a berserker born after he was killed. She's a wild, willful child who teaches herself to fight with weapons. When she learns where her father is buried, her only desire is to reclaim the treasure buried with him, but above all, the sword, Tyrvin. for the trials, like when we first met, remember? I'll find him. <gasps> What's that? Uh, did you hear that? Nothing. What's that voices? It's not the hearsay noise or the voices are dead. Not Dillian. Dillian's calling to you. Can Where you hear? is he? Where is he? He sounds like he's getting further. Herver disguises herself as a man to join a band of warriors, and soon becomes their leader. When they come to the island where her father is buried, her men do not want to go ashore. They say that evil haunts the island, and that it is a worse place by day than other places are by night. Fearless, she lands alone. There are many grave mounds, and all of them have ghostly flames burning over them. She comes to the grave mound of her father after passing through these ghostly fires as though they were mist. The flames I passed through were real enough. Damn the Northmen to hell.
don't touch the walls. You don't know what they might do. Turn back. She has to keep going. It's not safe here. She has to keep going. If you go down there, no one can see. I can hear him. Within the burial mind, Herver calls on her father to wake from death and bring her his sword. She says that it is not seemly for the dead in their grave minds to bear valuable weapons. Her father answers with words of warning. You go to your doom. Baleful runes surround you. You have gone mad. You have lost your mind. Your thoughts are confused. It is dangerous to wake the dead. Like I said, she reminds me of you. <laughs> The voice is getting louder. Listen, Dillian. <gasps> listen, listen, listen. It's him. Listen. It's getting louder. There he is. You're getting closer. <gasps> Keep going. Send one. Follow the voice. You're nearly there. Dillian's voice. It's him. He's going to save you. Find the voice. Find him. <gasps> it's not him. It's not you. We told you. It's not him, it can't be. What's that sound? The voice is changing. What? <gasps> That's not Dillian. Herver ignores her father's warnings. The grave mound opens, and it seems to be full of fire. Again, Herver demands her inheritance. But her father <gasps> warns her that the sword is cursed and would be the bane of her family. But he relents and brings her the sword. She leaves the island with it. But the curse holds true, and death would follow in the years to come. And so, Senua, the misdeeds of a father have cursed his daughter.
wants me to find him. I'm lost without him. That voice. It's not Dillian. I'm leaving. I've decided. I think it will be good for me. It's the darkness. It's speaking through you. No, Dad, it's me. I think I can beat it. In my own way. I can see the darkness in your eyes, child. I met a boy. Boy? The chief no. He said he could help me. It's a trick. He said it could be normal. Normal? Yes. No boy is going to save you. No one can. When they see the rot growing no. inside you, no. they will turn their back on you. The gods can only fix you through my hand. You're going nowhere. No. You will not defy the gods. Come, child, take my hand. Come. Send one. No! I am leaving! You cannot escape the darkness. Your curse will make everyone suffer. You will have blood on your hands! It's done. You did it, but there's more. I want to tell you a story about a god of the Northmen called Baldur, the second son of Odin. He was beautiful, good and wise. He was fair of feature, he spoke fair words, he gave fair judgments. Light shone from him, only good things were told of him. Yet he was the first of the gods to die.
The Northmen tell this story about the death of Baldur. It begins with dark dreams. Night after night, Baldur dreams of his own death, and the gods fear for his life. So Baldur's mother makes everything in the world. Fire, water, iron, stone, earth, wood, beasts, birds, serpents, poison, sickness. Swear an oath not to harm her son. One by one, they each make their vow. Neither weapons nor wood will injure him, Baldur's mother boasts. Only Loki, father of Hela, the mistress of death, is not amused. once seemed so simple. Black and white. Darkness and light. Narrow dividing lines of our own making. Dillian taught her to see further. To peek through the cracks and see the worlds of color stretching away from the gloom. And Senno explored new paths into the unknown. Is it really true that all things promise to keep him safe? I did not ask the gods feast and rejoice and amuse themselves by throwing spears and stones at Baldur, striking at him with sword and axe. But he comes to no harm, whatever they do. The gods never cease to wonder at this great marvel. But Loki shapes himself into a woman and asks Baldur's mother, Is it really true that all things promise to keep him safe? I did not ask the mistletoe, Baldur's mother confesses. I thought it was too young. Oh dear. He's up there. How do you get 
Loki makes a dart out of mistletoe and goes to the gods as they throw things at Baldur. The blind god, Huth, was there. Loki asks him why he wasn't taking part. Huth says, I cannot see where Baldur stands, and even if I could see him, I have no weapon. Loki replies, Here is a wand. I will tell you where he stands. And Huth throws the mistletoe at Baldur. It pierces through him, and to everyone's horror, Baldur is killed. And for this, Huth is slain. tell how the gods mourned Baldur. His body was to be burnt on his ship, but they could not manage to push it into the sea and sent for a giantess to do it. She comes riding a wolf and has vipers for her reins. She pushes Baldur's ship into the sea with such force that the ground shakes and the rollers burst into flames. When Baldur's wife sees his body carried onto the ship, her heart bursts with grief and she dies. She's put next to her husband, and the pyre is lit, sending the dead to hell. But even so, the gods cannot accept his death. Years had passed since she left her father. She trained hard alongside her friend, Dillian. She saw things no one else could. Patterns, shapes, movement. An intuition that made her an exceptional warrior. Friendship turned to love. But the shadow of darkness never let her go. And she was caught between two worlds. That of Zinbel and her past. And Dillian. Her future. The realities tearing at her soul. Overcome with grief, the gods send Hermod to ride to Hell and ask Hela to let Baldur return home. All the gods are weeping, he says. Are they? asks Helen. We shall see if he is truly missed. If everything in the world will weep for him, he shall go back to the gods. But if even one thing refuses, Baldur stays with me. The gods send messengers everywhere. Weep for Baldur. Weep him out of hell. And everything wept. Men, beasts, earth, stone trees, metal, everything, except for a giantess they find in a cave. Baldur was never my friend, she says. Let Hell keep what she has. The Northmen say that the giantess must have been Loki in disguise.
the way he touched you. Northmen tell how the gods punished Loki for Baldur's death. They captured him and took him to a cave. They fetched his two sons and turned one into a wolf, and he ripped his brother apart. The gods used Loki's own son's entrails to tie him down and turned these bonds to iron and dangled a poisonous serpent over his face so that its venom would drip onto him. Each time the venom drips onto Loki's face, he writhes in agony. The Northmen say that is the cause of earthquakes. A reminder, perhaps, that if even gods must accept death, then so must we. Do you remember the smell of his neck? Druids, like her father, Zinbel. I guess he took after his father, a chieftain who believed nothing he couldn't see. And he happened to be blind. She felt safe in Dillian's arms, had to see the world through his eyes. Slowly, the darkness that had bound her so tightly began to unravel. Senua. 
Your father cannot understand your darkness. He cannot see through your eyes. No one can. <laughs> My own father was born blind. Doesn't have the faintest idea of what the night looks like. <laughs> the word dark to him means as little as the word light. So someone is afraid of the dark. Should we fix them by taking away their sight? But you give up the beautiful world. You, only you can see just to be rid of your nightmares. Or is this the price you pay for the gift you have? A gift that makes you so special in my head. Just another part of the person I love. I left for the wilds to protect you from my darkness. Because I love you. But it made it worse. I'm so sorry. What if this is pointless? What if you're wrong? What if this is not to do with the sword? What if we're wrong? The sword will never be yours. I saw once a plague strike northern lands of ice. It was so terrible that not the oldest man among us could remember the like. Hundreds died. The sickness took nearly every person younger than forty and many older. And where dying mothers gave birth, the marks of the plague were on the babes as they came out of the womb. I don't like it. This place feels... It doesn't what is like this place? It. This place feels... It's... Creepy. Creepy. It feels wrong. It feels strange. Where is it? Where are we? Turn back. This is wrong. This has to be wrong. This place stinks. Ah. Uh, there he is. There Did he is. is. The light. Go towards it. He's in the house. He's Find going him. in. He's disappearing. Follow him. Don't let him disappear. <laughs> Keep going. <sighs> it's a test. <sighs> like the old warrior trials. <sighs> Dillian will help me. <sighs> the stench of rot. <sighs> she can almost taste it. Do you smell it? Not everyone can. It was a warm spring day when she went to the river with Dillian and the others. But the water. She could taste the rot. But no one else could. She knew something was wrong. Something sinister. She begged them to leave, but they just laughed at her. But soon enough, as the bodies piled up, no one was laughing. And they knew that she was not like that. The Northmen speak of a death moon. A light shaped like a half moon that appears inside a house and goes around the walls. I once saw the death moon appear at a farm, and first the shepherd died, then a guest died, and then the farm hands, and then the farmer and six of his men drowned at sea. But that is not the end of it, because the dead return to haunt the living. If you see the death moon, then beware.
because there will be death in that house. That's it. You did it. Up the tower. There was a Northman called Grettir, big, red-haired, immensely strong, but he was afraid of the dark. It happened one night that an undead creature came to his house to drag him outside into darkness and kill him. He resisted with every ounce of his strength. He clung to the doorframe, but it gave way, and they spilled out of the house, and the monster fell back, and the moon shone down on its ghastly face. Grettir, terrified, cuts off its head, but is cursed forever. From that moment on, wherever he was, he would see those hideous eyes staring back at him. Sometimes we allow our own fear to haunt us to our grave.
Send you up. Send you up. What happened? They're blaming me for the plague. They say that I'm cursed. What if they're right? How would they know such a thing? Are they gods? None of us are. They're just people. Good people, but they're scared. They're afraid of what they can't see. Like children scared of the dark. They make up stories to fill the void. It doesn't make them true. What if my father was right? You have to step out of this darkness. Let them see who you really are, like I am. You're not a monster. were yours, but they're the gods now. Nothing is yours anymore. Dillian's disappearing with your memories. Say that their all father, Odin, gave his eye in exchange for a drink from Mimir's well, the well of wisdom. In blindness, there can be wisdom. Only by giving can you receive in return. For this reason, I give my life and pass on my stories of the Northmen to you, Senua. They've gone. I'm still here. It's so quiet. It's so dark. It's okay. Listen to your own breath. Feel it rise and fall. Good. Be aware of everything you hear and feel. Let your senses guide you.
think I'm somewhere else now. That debris has gone. Use all of your senses. Let the world speak to you. What do you hear? I hear water. Go to it. I've reached the water. Good. That's your way out. Follow it upstream. So sorry. I thought I left this all behind. Don't be sorry. It's not your fault. He was right. It's inside of me. It won't let me go. Shannon. My father. He taught me that the hardest battles are fought in the mind, not the soul. You're no coward. Prove that to me in the warrior tribe. This is just another battle. You can beat it. This isn't your battle. You don't have to help me. I want to. Besides, you are going to be a great warrior one day. You need people like you. Okay. I'll do my best.
It's not following. Leave it behind. Keep moving forward. There's more of them. I think they're moving. You're breathing too fast. I'm scared. This is the sound of your breath. In and out. In and out. Do this and I think I'm in a house. It stinks. Of death. The darkness is testing you. But you are in control.
as well. Don't turn back. You're getting close. She could spend hours, days even, trapped within herself, in the dark. You see me? Yes. Your eyes were open, but you were... gone. And when it finally let her go, she could be anywhere with no memory of how she got there. When it comes for me, I have no power over it. But here, for the first time, someone was there to help. But I heard your voice. You brought me back. You found your own way back. All you needed was a little help. A little hope. Odin's blessing to walk a goddess into the halls of Helheim and challenge Hela as an equal. So Dillion was helping me. And a sword will lead me to him. Like when we first met. He's waiting for you by the tree. strength to pass the warrior trials and she saw a way out to leave her past behind and become a warrior in Dillian's clan. The sword is tainted by the gods of darkness. Leave it. No. You left it here. 
He wants me to take it. You will pay a price for this. But years later, with Zinbel's parting words still haunting her, the darkness came back with a vengeance. A plague. Tell you? Everyone suffered. My father was not supposed to die like this. This is your fault. <laughs> you brought this plague to us. <laughs> you have blood on your hands. They're coming for you now. They're coming. They're coming to get you. Going to die. No, she isn't. She needs to focus in fact. It's coming back. Defend yourself. Stop them. He's finished. Focus. It's the only way. Focus. Focus. Finish this! End it now! Focus now! Focus! Focus now! Focus now! Focus! Focus! Focus. You'll see. Focus now! In the sea of corpses, the corpse waved through itself over the ones I loved. The ship broke up under them, the ship that had sailed from the land of shining fields. Their memorial stone is sacred. Come not here in the sun. Come not with a sword. Come not crying over a naked corpse. Come not with a disturbed mind. Suffering, Senua. Does your precious gift of sight let you see the souls that rot here in this sea of corpses? Do you feel the blood running cold on your skin? Do you hear their endless cries? Do you smell their putrid wounds? They were once brothers, sisters, and loved ones. And look at what you have done to them. All because you were a coward, because you banned from your curse instead of facing it. When you turned your back on the Father Zinbel, you turned your back on the gods and let the darkness wreak havoc on your people. Why must they pay for your heresy?
Where are you? Do you hear, Sinoa? It's Do you hear mother! the voice of your mother, Gautama? I need you! Stop she me. calls for you, Sinoa. Gautama, answer her pitiful call. to the gods. If only you had done the same, the world would have been spared this horror. It's not too late. She's calling for you. Why don't you join her?
gave up on her world to follow in the footsteps of her mother to go to a place where the darkness couldn't reach her Senua look at me do you hear that Calling for me. We've lost so many. And I've lost my father. I can't lose you. You said it. I have blood on my hands. I didn't say that. You've done nothing wrong. Simba was right. Everyone will suffer. Zimbal is a fake. He is a hateful, bitter liar. He's poison. And his words still haunt you. 
Who do you trust? Him? Or me? Do you still believe in me, Senor? In us? Come back to me. Please. Don't let this darkness come between us. sword with which to fight in more ways than one. And she gave him her word, never to surrender. All she needed was a little help, a little hope. 